All right, guys. Top of the morning. Top of the morning. Kish, my world. Welcome to a whole new video. Brand new day. Brand new time. I am back in Rwanda. Yes, I just came back from Burundi, and immediately I came to the western side of uh, Rwanda, and I am currently in a place called uh, Jisenyi. Jisenyi, which is like the third biggest city here in Uganda. Uh, sorry, not in Uganda, in Rwanda, Yemen. And uh, I'm actually very, very close to the border to Congo. So uh, I think today we are going to go to Congo just to explore, you know, and uh, to see how it is. A lot of people have been saying not to go to Congo, it's not safe. Uh, there is like rebel activity and all this blah, blah, blah. But you know, we gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, that's people instilling their fear on me. But I need to go to Congo, man, I'm sorry. I have to go, I'm so close, it's literally over the waters on this side, you're in Congo. But, uh, you know, I know how to handle myself and I'm gonna do it well. And I'm just gonna go there maybe for the day and then I'll come back to, to Rwanda. And uh, I've had this a lot of tension between Rwanda and uh, Congo and the Congolese people do not like the Rwandese people. So I'm Kenyan, so I'm not in a problem. But I hope they can differentiate that I'm not from this place. So that's the, the main catch. Anyway guys, welcome to a whole new video from Chisenyi. Let's go and look for breakfast and then head over to Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, the richest country in the world in terms of minerals, man. But also the most exploited and the most taken advantage of. Yeah man, that is it my friends. Wow guys, so I'm gonna have a heavy, heavy Rwandese uh, breakfast over here. Actually, it's not a Rwandese breakfast, it's a Congolese breakfast. And you can see this is like the huge, huge breakfast here. It's uh, a mixture of everything. There's like uh, potatoes here, there's like uh, bananas, there's rice, there's beans, there's some sauce that's coming along. Man, this is like a really, really heavy breakfast. And this is what they usually eat. This is a Congolese uh, place that I'm sitting over here on the outside. So I think when I have this breakfast, man, it's gonna kick, kick, kick me for the rest of the day. And uh, yeah, it looks good. It looks good, good, good and healthy. And uh, it only goes for 1,200 uh, Rwandese franc. Hmm. Perfect. So once I get this, man, I'm sorted for the day. It's definitely gonna keep me going for the rest of the day as we go on with our adventures my world let's enjoy guys man I uh, I'm done with the breakfast heavy heavy breakfast and uh, it's time to now start my journey into Congo in Goma and I have to say when I'm walking in this area Jisen uh, Rubavu it's I feel like there's a lot of tension in the air somehow I don't know I just feel there's like some I don't feel as if the way it was when I was in Kigali for example I feel there's like some level of tension because uh, you know there's a lot of uh, problems between Rwanda and Congo and the reason being that the Congolese government is accusing the Rwandese government of uh, aiding a militia group here called the M23 into the destruction and stabilization of uh, Goma province in Congo so that they can exploit the minerals from there and uh, just take, you know, take the resources from there. So I don't know, but uh, I can feel this tension when you're walking around, there's a lot of military. Like they, I just walked by, by a group of Rwandese military, like in a long stretch, fully armed, hand on the trigger, walking down. And, uh, and I'm checking in the news agencies also, I'm seeing like there's, uh, they're saying, like the UN last week was speaking about a risk of war between uh, Congo and Rwanda. So I don't know, the atmosphere, honestly, for me, it feels a bit tense. But you know, we gotta do what we gotta do. Yaman. So right now I'm heading into the Congo border. Or I think maybe I'm gonna take a, a bike. There's like two borders, I was told. One of them is very hectic and very rough. It's for like businessmen, business people, so they don't give a damn about anything. They cross the border, no lines, no order, no nothing. Then there's another one which is like more organized, which they call it like the VIP. Uh, border entry which is the one I'm gonna take yes that one is more 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 better 
and also I will be very careful with what I am going to be placing on film because uh, our fellow YouTuber Kenyan here called and this she was she crossed the border from that side and then she removed her camera like this and started filming just showing the beautiful area and how it looks like and immediately a group of guys bounced on her they called the police on her she was arrested she was harassed she was manhandled and she had to pay a lot of money in bribes to be able to you know to be set free and they deleted all her footage so i'm probably not gonna film within the border area i have to be very careful and make sure i know where i'm filming and uh, i will probably not use my gopro i will use my phone if i get uh, the rare opportunity but i'll still carry my gopro just in case so guys wish me luck i don't know what's about to happen yes but i really want to go to congo man because i love that country so much and uh, i want to go and see the natural beauty breathe the air of congo the kivu river whatever man that comes along yes that is it my friends so let us go into congo Okay guys, so I'm at the border now, filming secretly as usual because, uh, you know, politics and, uh, and, and how borders operate is just crazy. So let me try and cross over into Congo, then we'll see how the tingo, how the rest of the tingo, you know. That is it my friends, let's go into Congo now. So guys, I am at Lake Kivu, in this side you can see and this is the border between Congo and uh, Rwanda. So I'm about to cross the border here in Lake Kivu in this beautiful, beautiful place. Again, I have to be very, very careful with filming here because I don't want any harassment. Congo is Kenya is supposed to be visa free or visa on arrival for for Kenyans to Congo. So I hope they actually approve that. But the other, the Congo is where I require a visa. But DRC, I don't require a visa. All right, let's go. A few moments later Guys, I made it to Congo, DRC, Goma, very, very beautiful country. Yes, man, and I'm really, really enjoying. I mean, the motorcycle here. Unfortunately, I'm only filming myself because I can't really film everywhere. I'm a bit, you know, the tension is high, but there's a lot of military presence also. So, so we are over here. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to Oh, Namagorofa. Namagorofa, oh, no. So my guy is telling me to film the buildings here so that people can see the beauty of Goma. Even though it's a bit of attention, you know. 
just a risk of taking, but it is what it is. It's like a, it's like a shit and a scary. Welcome to Congo. Lakini apakuna vita. Apa? Yeah. Oh, kope bendi. Apa bado? Okay. Apa iko sawa? Yeah, kuda pembeni huko. Lakini huko atufiki. Atufiki huko. Yeah. <laughs> so guys, I made it finally to Congo, the DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. And the guys, this is the, the second biggest uh, country in Africa. It's, super super huge somebody told me like for example to get from here where i am which is in like kivu in goma congo to get all the way to like kinshasa which is the capital it's about a three two to three hour flight so it's really really big and really really long and uh, very very diverse also guys this is like the second no, the most rich country in the world even you know when it comes to natural minerals and and wealth and everything you know like this is where they, the the europeans come to mind for cobalt which is the mineral used to make the phone that you use you know the machines that you use at home electronics even weapons sometimes you know and that's just some of it they even have diamonds they have gold they have a lot of minerals a lot of you know natural beauty wealth everything and that is why they are always trying to destabilize this beautiful country but things are gonna get better so finally i'm in this place this hotel it's called uh, Cap kivu Cap kivu hotel and uh, finally i can be able to film a bit more free here because you know it's a resort it's a hotel and uh, i'm just sitting here by the water side let me show you this is the beautiful area if you can see the kivu is just by my side here so so beautiful yes and uh, let me tell you my experience uh, so far arriving here i'm having a local beer here you know whenever i go somewhere i always try the local beer just one i don't drink a lot i don't drink at all i just like tasting beers from different countries yeah this is called primus it's quite sweet but it's also really nice yeah and i enjoy it okay so what was i telling you guys i was telling you my process to come here so i took the bicycle as you guys saw from uh, rwanda heading to the border then i got to the border in uh, goma and uh, they check for your yellow fever certificate and your passport of course but then this lady who was controlling there she came up with this new ridiculous rule that says I need to have other vaccinations which include like a tetanus vaccination like who's ever heard of a tetanus vaccination being a, a demand you know very very ridiculous sorry I got interrupted but uh, as I was saying it's uh, this lady there in the, the one who's checking the vaccinations and stuff she's like oh I need to have a, a tetanus vaccine and I don't know something else and I'm like I've never heard of that it's ridiculous it's like yeah this is a, a requirement if you're gonna come into congo and uh, you need to pay a fee <laughs> you need to pay 30 us dollars to be able to to get that that vaccine or that certificate of course there's no vaccine they're even offering you they just want to it's just corruption man it's, seriously it's it's terrible so anyways i go there to the border and then i tell her no 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 me i'm not gonna pay you 30 dollars i'm not paying you nothing because I know very well that I do not need a visa to get into Congo and then she's like oh yeah yeah you don't need a visa you're not from Tanzania because apparently Tanzanians need a visa then she's like okay but uh, you need this stamp and I tell her no I don't need that stamp because I know it's not needed and she's like okay then uh, unfortunately it's not possible then I was like okay because I'm not even going to do anything specific in Congo I just wanted to go just see the place have some lunch have a good feel of how Congo is then I go back so I told her, okay, then it's okay, I can go back. Then she's like, okay, you, how much do you have? Then I'm like, me, I don't have money. I don't even have that money you're asking me for, that $30 you're telling me. So I'm like, yeah, it's okay. Like, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not willing to pay $30 to go into a country for, two, for a few hours just to, you know, see how it is. So I'm like, let me just go back. 
then now they're like okay how much do you have they're like i don't have money they're like no you give me even Rwandese money even whatever money you have ah, but it was too much hassle they just want anything so i was too tired so i gave them like uh, two thousand uh, Rwandese franc which is pretty much nothing uh, yeah just because they really just want some very very money it's like less than a dollar so i gave it to them but of course i know it's the corruption of the place anyway so after that then i went they let me go through and i went to passport control the rwandese side is perfect no problems no hassle or nothing they stamped me out then i go to the congo side and i'm waiting in line then it's my turn and i come and i hand them my kenyan passport then the guy looks at it he asks me where i'm going he asks me what my job is and then he's like okay uh, you don't need a visa because you're a kenyan uh, but usually it's $50 then I'm like okay that's relevant information for me then he tells me yeah but because uh, it's your first time is the first time you're getting to get into Congo you have to pay $10 <laughs> and I'm like what he was like yeah and he's speaking in a really low tone because you know he's the migration officer like seriously sitting in the office there then he's like yeah you need to pay $10 then I'm like, no, I don't need to pay $10. I'm a Kenyan, and Kenyan is visa free to enter into the DRC. He's like, yes, it's visa free. But if it's your first time, you need to pay $10. And I'm there fighting him. I'm like, no, I don't think I, uh, I need to pay anything. No, I told him, me, I don't have any money. Because uh, me, as far as I know, to come into Congo, I don't need any visa. It's visa free for a Kenyan. So he looks at me with really bad eyes. He seemed to be very angry because of what I'm telling him because he saw he knew i'm right and then i was like you know if you don't want to stop me and it's okay i can just go back then he just takes my passport gives me a very angry look and he stabs me in top up and he says go because of course you don't need to pay shit. Uh, can you imagine even a migration officer is there trying to prove to me how much i'm supposed to pay to come in here like i'm supposed to pay ten dollars just because of a stamp because it's the first time these are rules they make up from nowhere so yeah man, Africa, this is Africa man, it has all these rules they make up depending on where you are, you know. Mm. So, yeah, so I made it through, uh, then I walked down the street, and I got this mm, Boda Boda guy, like the motorcycle guy. And he told me he knows a place where he can bring me, which is this place. But man, it's, I'm really freaking out filming on the street, because it's not easy. So that's why I can't really do a lot of content from here because uh, it's tough there's military presence everywhere and i don't want to be harassed i don't want to be you know because it's it's highly corrupt country this one so all they want is you to make the smallest and slightest mistake then they will jump on you because they want to get some money from you and like it's just extortion and since uh, i'm not willing to be extorted i'm really being very very careful with filming also the border closes at three o'clock because of the tension between Congo and Rwanda so uh, there's no late borders after three o'clock they close so I have to be here like real quick after I'm done I have to go back to the to, to Rwanda yeah so that's it so far so good uh, I'm really loving the Congo man Congo is really beautiful uh, I've gotten a few clips which I'm placing here and there you guys can see the people look really nice uh, the area looks good but it's a bit tough it's a bit tough to be honest but I think I wish to be free to film and just show videos. But of course I understand right now there's a lot of, there's a war going on here where I am actually in this region, not too far away from there. There's a war that's happening. People are being displaced. Actually in this county of Goma, uh, like two, three weeks ago, there were two rocket attacks that were thrown here by the militia and uh, people actually died. No, uh, maybe they survived. Yes, boss. Yeah. So people actually got into problems and uh, they were hurt and all these things. But uh, I'm glad uh, I got to come and see it. So next time, hopefully, when the war is over or when things are more stable, I can be able to come and experience this beautiful country in its entirety. Okay, so I'm going to try and film some more before we go. I don't know if I can be able to capture some amazing stories from here. It's, uh, to be honest, it's very tricky, but I'm going to try my best. I'm going to play my part and uh, i can feel what i get and what i don't get guys bear with me but so far so good it's such a beautiful country uh, the, the water the water is here in lake kivu are to die for look and this is fresh water lake fresh water lake it's called lake kivu so even if you were to swim here look at this beautiful country 
So even if you were to swim here, the water does not get into your eyes, it doesn't affect you. There's a lot of fish. I actually just saw a fisherman somewhere over there doing some fishing. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can be able to get to that side and connect with the locals, you know, because there I think it can be free to film. Just understand their story and see these guys getting fresh water from here to do whatever he wants to do. Yeah, man, this is DRC. And that's the airport. The airport is actually very close to here. It's called Goma International Airport. So if you want to fly in, you can see there's like huge birds flying in the air. And by bird, I mean airplanes, which are in this place. I don't know if you can zoom it in. There we go. Yeah. So this is Congo DRC. It's my first time, my first experience here. Just checking it out and seeing how everything is. Yes, and then after that we will go out and uh, explore some more and see what the country has to offer. Yes man, that is it. So, so far so good. Uh, people here use a lot of dollars because the currency is a bit weak. So, let's see if you can be able to get around here. Uh, this is a resort that I'm at, it's very expensive, but uh, it's only for the rich people. But the local people, they have their normal lives everywhere. And I'm trying to see if I can get to the, no the noble people who are working and grinding in those other places over there. Let's see how much we can gather up. Otherwise, at least I've experienced DRC in one way or another. Fish my world. So beautiful. Oh shit, guys. It just hit me. <coughs> I made a mistake. I said this is... the like, Kivu is the deepest and second largest lake in Africa, but it's actually not. That's like Tanganyika which is uh, towards Burundi and Congo also has the same lake but this is Lake Kivu, it's a different one which is shared by by Rwanda not, uh, yes, but not, 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 you, uh, not Burundi Yeah? Eh, Kadi? Visa? Yes, so uh, it, was, it was my bad, my mistake, but you know, it happens so let me pay my bill here. Here the, the bills are paid in US dollars, as you can see. This is like, they bring you the bill and it's in dollars because the Congolese franc uh, is very, very weak. I don't even know what they call their money. This is their money. This is like Congolese money. This is like 500 uh, uh, francs. Yeah, it's francs, but it's very, very weak. So they prefer to use dollars. So. Let me pay them in dollars, dollar dollars. So for a beer, it costs two US dollars. And uh, I'm gonna pay with card, hopefully, it's allowed. Then we go and explore some more and see this country right before we leave the border. That is it, my friends. Okay, guys, I managed to escape the resort and I'm now in the streets, the real, real streets of uh, Congo DRC. And let's go and explore a little bit, see what's good, see Wagwan, beautiful country, as it is right now, Kish my world. Yes man, so this is the streets over here, it's not the busiest part of course. That's where I can be able at least to film freely, it's just by the lake side over here and I'm trying to see if I can get down there because I saw there's a place down there where you can access the waters. And uh, that's the point of the day. And there's a lot of hotels around here where you can come and just chill and make merry. Yeah, man, this is uh, the DRC in Congo. And the weather here is amazing, amazing. The only thing is uh, the borders closed so early, so I can't really do a lot of uh, exploring because I have to go back to Rwanda because uh, I was not planning to sleep in Congo. But uh, next time, maybe I'll sleep longer, you know. Guys, there's some really nice houses over here. As you can see, nice areas. People just uh, in gated communities in Congo. So there's no war here, you know. Everything is good. Everything is safe. They're trying to, you know, just keep on with their daily lives. Hustling, doing the best that they can. That is it. This is Congo, man. Okay guys, so Kish my world, I'm in uh, DRC and I came, I was walking in the streets and I came across this uh, lovely lady here and we're just gonna find out what she thinks. Just a few questions about Congo, you know, just to spice it up, you know. Yes, my sister, hi. Hi. <laughs> Bariako. Okay, so you don't speak English, no? 
a little. 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 <laughs> yeah, maybe you can try because my my but, audience is. But now I need speaking Swahili. In Swahili, yeah. but you're speaking good English. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> because my my audience speaks English. That's why. So even if you can, okay, mix. Can you mix? Swahili. Swahili. Okay, so why not? Shida. Sasa, apa goma? This is goma, yeah. Is it safe? Because uh, we are hearing in the news it's not safe. Is it safe here? Yani iko sawa. Apa ama kuna vita? Apa apa goma? Yeah. Vita haijafika hapa. Haijafika hapa. Eh vita iko kule ndani ya ma ba. I don't know comment dire. Yeah. Si kama interior ku village. Oh. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, lakini it hapa security is okay. Okay. Hakuna okay. task moja wamefanya kitu yote rebels ama kukakuwa na vita. Ba, kuna muda, kuna fujo. Mm. Ba, je sais pas. I don't know comment vous appelez pour grève. Eh? Fujo ya fujo ya watu ambao wanaishi hapa Goma. Eh, yeah, iko saa zingine. Saa zimoje nafika wakilia kwa nini vita iko? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Na fujo ikianza mnafunga maduka ama kama ni 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 fuja wenye memba wa goma yeah. mnafunga maduka. Oh mnafunga maduka. Na siku ya mwisho kulikuwa na vita ilikuwa lini? Ama fujo. Siku ya mwisho ulifunga dirisha juu ya fujo hapa ilikuwa lini? Ba, ilikuwa fujo tu juu ya kujulisha viongozi yeah. wajitie ndani ya mambo na usu vita ilikuwa kule Okay, uko Eastern. Eh. Na kuna watu wengi wametoroka kutoka kule wamekuja hapa. Wamepita mara nyingi wakipita wakiomba, yeah. wasaidie. Oh, hawana makazi, hawana yeah. chakula. Hawana makao. Yeah. Ma, majambazi wamekamata fasi yao. Yeah. Hmm. Ni majambazi wa gani hao wamekamata? Unawajua? Yaani majina. Tumesikia yeah. lakini sijawahi kuwaona. Lakini hujawaona. Hmm. Okay. Na wewe uko na familia yenye imepitia hizo mafujo ama watu unajua? Wenye amepitia fujo mahali. Hapana. Okay. Wewe uko sawa. Wewe ni mkazi wa Goma? Ndiyo. Umezaliwa hapa? Ndiyo. Na umelelewa hapa? Ndiyo. Okay. Alafu nimeona huku nikitembea kuna wanajeshi wengi sana, wengi sana. Boni ambao wanatoka hapa Goma hmm. wanaenda kule kupambana okay. yeah. ili wasaidie wana memba wa huko yeah. wakae ndani ya salama. Oh, wakae wakuwa salama. Yeah. Na hivi vita unaona ni kama itaisha ama itaendelea tu? Yote Mungu ndio anajua. Yeah. Yeah. Tunaweza pambana kwa nguvu yetu. Yeah. Me kama Mungu hayapenda iishe haitaisha. Yeah. Akipenda iishi itaisha. Okay. Watu wa Goma tumejitia nguvu, tukiwaambia mm. ndugu zetu, imani mbele ya Mungu tunajua itaisha. Eh, yeah. kweli. Na hivi vita kuna watu wanasema wa wa, wa, wa Nyarwanda ndio wanasababisha hii vita pia. Ni wewe unaona aje maoni yako? Ba, kufatana na hiyo yeah. sijui. Ujui. Antuka sijui. Yeah. Kwa Nyarwanda no ni watu kama sisi, ni yeah. watu kama wao. Yeah. Hiyo ni mambo na usu wakubwa. Wakubwa. Yeah. Okay. Kwa hivyo wewe unapenda wa Nyarwanda au una shida nayo? Sina shida ni watu kama nani okay. ni na wandugu Yeah. Sababu kuna Wanyarwanda wenye awanini hapa. Hawapendi na wakongomani hawapendi Wanyarwanda wengine. Bo, kuungana na mambo ya vita, ukisikia mm. wana member wa wa, wa inchi. Sasa so, wana gisi wanaongea. Mm. Inahusu pia Rwanda. Yeah. Ila mimi. Yeah. Sina shida. Hauna shida. Yeah. Ah. Na kama shida iko. Yeah. Ah, kati yetu sie na Wanyarwanda. Mm wasaidia nete maungu anishu ikuwe salama ok na sasa wewe ukiwa hapa kazi ni muwako unaishi karibu na hapa ndi ukona familia ndi ee watoto hapa o una watoto o uko kwa wazazi ndi ee ukona uoga ama unahofia mambo itaribika wanza vita hapa pia uogo napasha wakua tu yee vite kifika kwa kwa tunaoga Mko na uoga. Mnaishi na uoga. Ndii. Kila wakati. Kila wakati atujue atujue kama tutashinda ama yeah. kama wanatushinda. Yeah. Ama kama vita itazuka saa ngapi? Ah hatujue. Eh, yeah. kwa hivyo ni yote sisi ni Wakristo. Eh, yeah. mnaamini yeah, tu. Eh, yeah. atawale. Ndii. <laughs> okay. Na tusame vita ikatokea saa hizi wamekuja au marebo wamekuja wamelala vita pa goma. Unaweza torokea wapi? Si 
sijui mm. na sipangi hiyo akilimu wangu. Oh, ufikiri hiyo. Maana najua Mungu anaweza. Ataku ataweza, yeah. atakutetea. <laughs> Asante. Haya, una jambo la mwisho ungetaka kuambia viongozi wenye wanasababisha hizi mavita ama wenye wanaleta hivi vita. Unaweza waambie nini kama wakikutazama kwa hii video? Kama wakimtazama kwa hii video Najua si seme Kiswahili safi vizuri. Iko sawa. Iko sawa. Yeah. Okay. Neno ambao napaswa kusema eh uh, si wote ni wanadamu, tumeumbwa mm. na Mungu. Vitu ama si jua ni seme nini, hapaswa tukutugombanishi hapana. Yeah. Yenye yeah. iko pale ni kusikilizana, kutia amani kati yetu na uhuru. Mm. Kujua nafasi yangu ni shia hapa, nafasi ya mwanangu ni shia hapa. Okay. Yeah tupendane ile kakuwa mapendo ndani tutaishi vizuri okay asante sana haya natimai watasikia haya <laughs> guys i am back to freedom man freedom like never before yes man i am back in jisenyi uh, jisenyi in rwanda and uh, at least we got to see how the drc looks like the vibe over there how everything is everything good everything nice and yeah it was a bit of a tension of course because as you can see like right as you cross into the border you step into the broader there's a lot of military presence but uh, here in rwanda everything is good no wahala no problems yes so let me just get settled in then we do a final recap of the days and how everything has been yes so welcome back to rwanda man the beautiful beautiful rwanda one of my best countries in africa so far loving it so much Guys, I am back to the cleanest city in Africa. Look at this man, the greenery, how everything looks. So nice, so beautiful, well kept, nothing on the streets. And this is not even Kigali, man. This is Goma. This is a, a Rubavu. Rubavu in a place called, known as uh, Jisenyi. And it is like super, super nice, organized, clean, safe, Buddha Buddhas, everything. The difference is crystal clear, man. The repairs everywhere, drainage is all looking nice and good. And you can see, like, I just came from uh, uh, Congo right now, like in Goma. And you can see the difference is huge, even everywhere. So I don't understand why these countries don't just borrow a leaf from their neighbors here in, uh, in Kigali, man. It's so nice, even as you're walking down here, you feel so much safe. There's no wahala, you're not afraid of anything, you know. So I don't know why African leaders don't just sit down with uh, President Paul Kagame of, uh, of Rwanda and ask him for a piece of advice, you know, how to make their countries as beautiful, as clean, as safe, as prosperous as this country right here. Because man, I'm telling you, I really, really love it. It's amazing. Yes, I just came from uh, DRC, as you guys probably know. And uh, I'm walking to my hostel, so that means it's uh, to my hotel, sorry, or guest house or wherever it is. And that means it's pretty, pretty close to the border. So, yeah, there's one thing that I saw in Congo that I didn't really like, I have to say. And uh, I saw there's a lot, a lot, a lot of military everywhere. Just trying to, you know, make sure that the rebels, the M23, now I can say it confidently. Because I was afraid to say that name in, you know, in Congo, just to avoid problems. But you can see that the, there's a lot of soldiers in the street, and that's okay because they have to protect their their country, their town, their city, and everything. But one particular thing that I actually did not like or enjoy is the fact that I saw in a military truck there were two drivers from. There were two, two, two soldiers who were driving, the driver and the co-driver, and behind there was the Congolese military. But now these guys, they are not even from Congo. They were wearing, they were white, maybe from like some European country. And these are the people that are bringing problems to Africa, I swear. I don't, I don't like it and I don't encourage it. Why do you have to bring a military into Congo to come and, uh, you know, destabilize the country? or as you guys say, stabilize the country. But we all know why you guys are coming here for. That really pissed me off, because uh, I want, like, the Congolese can protect their own country on their own. I don't understand why they need some white uh, European military men in full regalia with guns and full combat coming to interfere in the business and problems 
and politics of Africa. I think we are mature enough to handle everything on our own and we do not need them to come here and start intervening. Europe has enough problems on its own. America has enough problems on its own. Everywhere, we can take care of ourselves. So that was a bit uh, heartbreaking to see. And they really like they are, you know, probably trying to see how they can go and, and fight. But of course, they are the ones who love the fight so that they can exploit DRC. And I blame our leaders because I'm pretty sure the president of uh, DRC. Now I can speak about it calm out here because I don't care I'm out of the country. But I'm pretty sure the leadership of DRC probably knows about this and they encourage them and uh, they make them become part and parcel of this, which is very wrong in my opinion because they're probably profiting. Like when they extract the minerals of Africa, then uh, they leave it to them to just continue to exploit. And uh, the few majority who are the people who are, you know, in government and in power, they're the ones who are benefiting while the rest are languishing in poverty. Man, that breaks my heart, I don't know. Because you know what happens. So only a few people are profiting and gaining and becoming prosperous while the rest of the people they're suffering languishing in poverty yeah africa needs to take care of its own affairs we don't need no foreign interference that is it i said it anyways guys that was drc i had an amazing time there's some soldiers behind me as you can see but this is uh, rwanda so it's safe it's not a problem like if i was in Congo that was would have been <laughs> too much harassment also the what do you call it the corruption the corruption needs to end in Congo man it was lousy you know it was terrible as soon as I got off the as soon as I got into the border they had to skin me alive they had to take money from me you know but I didn't budge today I refused I refused to pay guys because I know how they are. I've learned, Africa has taught me to be a tough leaf. Now there's no more giving out free money, you know? No more giving out cash. <laughs> that is it, my friends. Okay, man, top of the morning, Kishma World. Thank you for watching this video. If you're new to the page, uh, subscribe. Give the video a like. We travel all over the world, showing the good, the bad, and the ugly. That is it, my friends. Kish, my world. See you in the next one. And guys, I have to say one thing. I am very, very, very impressed with Africa, East Africa, because uh, in Kenya, we speak Swahili. Tanzania speaks Swahili. I've been to Rwanda, they're speaking Swahili. Burundi, speaking Swahili. I went even to South Sudan. A good majority of people, they were speaking Swahili. Uh, where else? Now in Congo, they speak Swahili also. So Swahili, I'm really proud of Swahili. It's become an international language and uh, the language of Africa. So I'm really happy about that. And I hope Swahili kitokuzu, as we say, I'm really happy because everywhere I can survive with my Swahili and people are speaking it. It should be the African language. And that's how we make the change in this African country by one language.